Current heavy, persistent rain continues. Businesswoman pleads not guilty for cannabis found in frozen chicken. Caneville man assaulted during home invasion. In the region, Costa Rica, second COVID-19 wave hits tourism and internationally, Mali turmoil and unrest escalates after coup d'etat. Greetings and welcome to another edition of Channel 2 Headline News Update. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. The Guyana Meteorological Service has announced that the current heavy, persistent rain may not end until mid-July to August, with the National Weather Center warning that there could be more heavy rainfalls and thunderstorms. Chief Hydromet Officer Dr. Gavin Cummins revealed that the above normal rainfalls date back to December of 2020, except for February 2021. Dr. Cummins further stated, that what is unique about this year when compared to the devastating 2005 flood is that the severe weather is not isolated to any geographical space. We may have seven days of continuous rainfall, but there are indications that we may have consecutive days of dryness as well. While the forecast is suggesting above normal rainfall, above what we would usually get when we compare this year to long-term average, we see that we exceed that in some cases by 50 to 60 percent and in some cases approaching to 100 percent. Know that we are just starting in June, so the rainy season is now peaking. End of quote. Dr. Cummins noted that in terms of the Hydromet office's capacity, the biggest challenge is being able to effectively communicate not only the amount of rainfall, but its impact. A Caneville man was assaulted during a home invasion. Esther Sobers has more. Early this morning, five bandits armed with two cutlasses and one handgun robbed a 52-year-old driver and his family at Caneville East Bank Danraro. According to reports, sometime around 2.30 a.m., the driver and his family were awakened by loud repeated banging on their door. Upon investigating the sound, the victim was confronted by the bandits in his living room area, who had forced their way into the house by breaking open the door. One of the bandits dealt the man a chop to his head before demanding cash and valuables. The man handed over the cash, but the bandits began to ransack the home and relieved him and his wife of the other valuable articles. Not satisfied, the perpetrators demanded more money, which the victim told them he does not have. But they began to beat him about his body with their cutlasses and threatening to shoot him. The bandits eventually carted off with over $500,000 in cash and valuables. The police were called in and a search was made but no signs of the perpetrators were found. The injured victim was escorted to the Diamond Diagnostic Center to seek medical treatment for his injuries. Investigations are in progress. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Silvers. Thanks Esther. 40-year-old Jeanette Graves Sandy, a businesswoman of Plantation Best, West Coast de Marara, who was found with cannabis stuffed inside frozen chickens, appeared at the Georgetown Magistrates Court on Wednesday, charged with the possession of narcotics for trafficking. Graves Sandy pleaded not guilty to the charge and was placed on $200,000 bail. Ranks were on Sunday conducting a search operation at a checkpoint in Region 7 when they intercepted over 500 grams of marijuana stuffed inside of frozen chickens. According to a police statement, during a routine stop and search exercise, the ranks stopped the motor lorry transporting 12 passengers. A cooler belonging to Graves Zandi was searched, during which the 11 frozen chickens were found stuffed with 11 bulky parcels of cannabis wrapped in plastic and foil wraps. The case has been adjourned to June 23, 2021. Stick around, we've got more news for you after the break. Here's what's happening on Waterloo Street at John Lewis Styles during the month of June. Shop for Father's Day and you could win an all-inclusive trip for two to Arrowpoint Nature Resort. Buy any men's suit and get a free tie. Or buy any men's pair of shoes and get a free pair of socks. 
traveling this summer, buy any luggage set and get a free travel pouch. Visit us on Waterloo Street for more choices and better prices. John Lewis Styles, Simply different. When you need money and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Mmm, tastes so good. It's got to be made with Alabama Baker Wheat Flour. Produced from quality soft winter wheat and quality enzymes to give a superior product that's guaranteed to be luscious, delightful to taste, and stays fresher longer. Alabama Baker Wheat Flour is perfect for breads, roti, puri, pastries, chow mein, pastas, and many other delights. Imported and distributed by Alabama Trading. 6566 Rob Street, Borda, and 23 Lombard Street. Telephone 225-5800. Welcome to Kasum's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. Good, good girl, forget things. Good man! Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for borrow for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Welcome back. The Ministry of Health has announced that Ghana is moving closer to achieving herd immunity. The announcement was made by the Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, during his COVID-19 update on Wednesday. Dr. Anthony stated that 205,944 persons so far have received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccines, while 72,045 persons have been fully immunized. We have been working in terms of getting more people vaccinated and in terms of the age categories that we are we are looking at uh, 60 persons uh, 60 years and above we now have uh, about 70.5 percent of those persons uh, receiving their uh, vaccines uh, that is the first dose at least they have uh, 70.5 percent of, of persons have received their first dose and this is for persons 60 years and above. Uh, for 40 to 59 years uh, we have right now 38.3 percent of that age group receiving their first dose and for persons 18 to 39 years uh, we have 33.7 percent uh, receiving their first dose. So the numbers are going up, uh, but we still have a lot of work. Dr. Anthony further noted that despite recent flooding across the country, vaccinations are ongoing. In some of the regions, there are particular areas that have been flooded. So in those areas, obviously, we, we're not able to do um, vaccination. But we do have fixed sites that continue to work in every region. And we, have, um, we are still pushing some of the mobile sites to get out and get people vaccinated. So those centers are working. Most of them have not been affected by the flooding. The number of positive cases and deaths due to COVID-19 continues to rise in Guyana. Positive cases now stand at 17,257 and the number of deaths is 396, with May being the deadliest month. Persons are reminded to follow the COVID-19 gazetted guidelines. 
If you or anyone you know is experiencing symptoms of COVID-19, kindly call the hotline on 624-2819 or visit their website at www.health.gov.gy. A taxi driver was robbed of his car, cash and other valuables. Here's more from Mr. Sobers. Police are on the lookout for two men who allegedly robbed a taxi driver and hijacked his car. The incident took place on Wednesday at around 22.15 hours at Cane View Avenue, South Romwell Gardens. 26-year-old Shane Dean, who is attached to the New Line Taxi Service, was robbed of his car, $45,000, and cell phone by two men, one armed with a gun and the other posing as a customer. According to reports, one of the suspects joined the car at the base and requested to be taken to Caneview Avenue. Upon arrival at the location, the other two suspects who had clutches approached the car and pointed a gun at the victim. The suspect who was seated in the car began choking Dean. The armed perpetrator then demanded that the victim exit the vehicle. Dean got out of the car. The armed perpetrator got into the driver's seat and drove away. The victim's money and cell phone were in the right side pocket of the car. Investigations are ongoing. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Silvers. Thanks Esther. Don't go away. After the break, we have your regional and international news. I want money for bar for those soldiers. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> oh! Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Welcome to Kasoon's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture. Furnishing homes for over 60 years. Alabama Trading has everything you need every day. The best brands at the lowest prices. And right now, you can save much more on a larger range of food products and everyday essentials. Choose from our extensive array of fresh and packaged food items. Plus, there's a huge variety in ladies' handbags and accessories, children's toys, backpacks, and school bags, bicycles, rugs, outdoor and indoor furniture, cleaning and sanitizing products, and so much more. Alabama Trading. Better products, better prices. When you need money, and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold, and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Here's what's happening on Waterloo Street at John Lewis Styles during the month of June. Shop for Father's Day and you could win an all-inclusive trip for two to Arrowpoint Nature Resort. Buy any men's suit and get a free tie. Or buy any men's pair of shoes and get a free pair of socks. Traveling this summer? Buy any luggage set and get a free travel pouch. Visit us on Waterloo Street for more choices and better prices. John Lewis Styles. Simply different. 
Welcome back. Now we take a look at news in the region and around the world. Costa Rica is witnessing a COVID-19 crisis. The number of infections last month doubled to more than 67,000 and 810 people died, the most since the start of the pandemic. A second COVID wave worse than the first is keeping away most tourists who usually flock to the country. Al Jazeera's Gabriel Elizondo reports. Costa Rica is witnessing a COVID-19 crisis. The number of infections more than doubled last month to 67,000. And the number of deaths, 810, was the highest since the start of the pandemic. A second COVID wave, worse than the first, is keeping away most tourists who usually flock to this country. And for Jimmy Hernandez, a van driver and tour guide, that has meant he has had little to do these days. Tourism right now because of the pandemic has gone down almost 40 percent. It's affecting almost everyone. Some days we can't work, other days we can. So it's affecting us a lot. People say the situation everywhere is bad. So many places are closed, like businesses, so many people can't work and are unemployed. So this pandemic is so difficult how it's affecting people financially. Costa Rica is a country of five million people. Of those, only 11% have been fully vaccinated. And while that might not seem like a lot, compared to most other countries in Central America, it is. According to the Pan American Health Organization, the percentage of people fully vaccinated in El Salvador is just a little lower. But then that figure slips to just under 8% in Panama, and the rest of the region lags way behind. In Belize, it's just 2.6% of people fully vaccinated. Honduras, 0.4%. Guatemala, 0.2%. And Nicaragua, where statistics are unclear, it's believed almost nobody from the public has been fully vaccinated. The United States has promised to make 80 million vaccines available globally. Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias a todos. But in his visit here this week, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said it would be another two weeks before details can be announced. In Central America, the help can't come fast enough. Gabriel Ozando, Al Jazeera, San Jose, Costa Rica. Internationally, Nicaraguan police have raided the home of opposition leader Cristiana Chamorro, placing her under house arrest. She was expected to run in the presidential elections in November. Al Jazeera's Lucia Norman reports. Carloads of riot police arrived at Nicaraguan opposition leader Cristiana Chamorro's house with a search and arrest warrant, pushing waiting journalists and family members away. The unexpected raid on her home sparked immediate condemnation at home and abroad. Ortega should understand that um, his actions to grab power and to ensure himself uh, as a dictator of Nicaragua for the rest of his life is not, uh, is not an option. What is at stake here is the credibility of the Biden administration's commitment to deliver uh, protection for fundamental rights, freedoms, um, protecting democracy in Latin America. The U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, who was in neighboring Costa Rica as the raid was underway, tweeted that the warrant reflected, quote, Ortega's fear of free and fair elections. Earlier this week, the pro-government prosecutor had charged Chamorro, Nicaragua's most competitive presidential candidate, with alleged money laundering and what it termed as ideological deviations. She denies all charges. They're trying to fabricate a macabre trial, she said. Two other candidates in November's presidential election have already been jailed and two opposition parties banned. But Chamorro, the daughter of former President Yoleta Chamorro and of Pedro Joaquin Chamorro, a newspaper publisher who was assassinated by Nicaragua's former Samosa dictatorship, is the most high-profile target of the latest government crackdown. After more than five hours, the government put her under house arrest, leaving police to guard her home. They are trying to prevent a democratic, peaceful way out of our crisis. 
The alternative is one that will not end well. The decision not to take Chamorro to prison could reflect growing international pressure on President Daniel Ortega and his wife and Vice President Rosario. But the big question is whether that will be enough to guarantee a competitive election in the trouble-torn Central American nation. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera. And finally, Mali's coup leaders have been under growing pressure from the international community since their takeover, with the African Union suspending Mali's membership and threatening harsh economic sanctions. Al Jazeera's Nicholas Hay reports. Moro Sidibe is prepared to die for his country, the son of a soldier he's training to join Mali's army, a decision he took after seeing a young colonel take over power from the aging former President Keita last August. He believes the soldiers can succeed where politicians have failed, bring peace to his country and end the violence. The situation is getting worse. When I think of my country in this state of war, I am afraid for the future. That is why I want to join the fight and go to the front line. On Sunday, armed groups affiliated to Al-Qaeda shot security forces in the southern region where Sidi Bey is from. Despite a 2015 peace agreement with some armed groups and the presence of 14,000 UN troops in the north and center of the country, attacks are intensifying, with the Malian army losing ground to new armed groups like the Islamic State in the Greater Sahara. Almost half a million Malians have been forced to leave their homes. 6,000 people have been killed. Among the dead, Fatouma Tabo's husband, a captain who died after his vehicle drove over a roadside bomb. I was surprised. I didn't expect this. I spoke to him before the attack. He was telling me about the kids, our family, saying he would be back soon. He never came back. I hold the rebels, the armed groups, responsible for his death. The civilian government of transition formed last year was ready to negotiate with some of the armed groups, including with Al-Qaeda affiliates. But the new military junta leader, Colonel Goita, detained the prime minister and president last week. They resigned shortly after. Goita is now interim president, although he says he will stand down after organizing elections in February 2022. There's only been one peaceful transition of power. Five military coups, two of them in the last nine months, all of them started from here, the barrack town of Kati, where soldiers are deciding on the future of the country. The committee of the movement for Azawad, who signed the peace agreement, say they disagree with the military junta. Former Prime Minister Moussa Mara believes this is a worrying sign. Our officers are bickering over government positions in the capital Bamako, while African soldiers die on the front line, trying to protect our country. This is a humiliating situation. For Sidi Bey, it's not up to politicians or foreign forces to save his country from descending into further chaos, but the Malian people. He says he's ready to serve and defend Mali. That is all for today's regional and international news. Here now is your 3D weather forecast. That is all for this edition of Channel 2 Headline News Update. Tune in on Friday at 5.30pm for another episode. 
Be sure to subscribe, like and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Until then, stay safe and take care.